It was one of those headlines that grabbed you in a second. A New York City high schooler had made $72 million playing the stock market. Impressive, right? You'd click to read how he did it, and I know I did. But it turns out the teen, Mohammed Islam, made up the whole story he told New York Magazine's Jessica Pressler. This is a doozy for a bunch of reasons. Well, yeah, first of all, I mean, this were not professional hoaxers. And there are professional no, hoaxers they, they, out there. these were high school kids high who school. wanted to see if they could get someone to they buy into their story. They told a little fib, and then it kept snowballing and snowballing. They go on CNBC, they, and then they just get scared. They say, I can't do this. We can't maintain the fiction anymore. So that's one of the interesting things. They should have known better, maybe. But for sure, the <laughs> New York Magazine should have known better. I mean, come on. They wanted to believe this story because it fit in with their, what was it, top 10 or or 12 reasons right, New to, York to is love so New great. York or something. I think they wanted to believe to... it. I, I think it goes back to that. They wanted to believe the story because it's such a feel good thing. And we're in that feel good time of season, you know, where we got to have these kinds of stories. So I, I, when I first read, I was going, like, okay, come on, there's so many holes in this story. There is <laughs> no way that you could actually think that this is actually true. Well, and I understand that concept that magazines tend to have a much longer lead time in production, but the timing of this falling apart on the heels of the UVA, well, they have the lead- idea of verification, yeah. Yeah. the idea of, of another huge, highly publicized issue of verification not being done well enough this was just and bad. The problem for me is that I could see this one story in isolation. Okay, the media wanted to believe it. It was a feel-good story. The kids screwed up. We're all sorry. Move on to the next thing. But the same kind of impulse on the part of the media is what led to the problem with the Rolling Stone story. Mm-hmm. I suspect the reporter and the editors wanted to believe that at a fraternity house there could be this horrible gang rape of this poor student. Mm-hmm. Because the, it makes a good story. The media wanted to believe during the Duke lacrosse case that these white people privileged sports figures would rape a working class black woman. They wanted to believe it, so they didn't do the due diligence on the story. And that go, it really goes back to that is it, the old adage of when we were coming up in journalism where if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Yep. That's city and news I think, adage and that goes And I think back that decades. we really need to go back to that because over and over and over again, we sit here every week and we talk about stories that if someone just did a little bit more due diligence, you would find we that. We wouldn't have are, anything to talk we, about. Oh, that's true. <laughs> we wouldn't have anything.